Hey everyone, it's Eric, your Ground Pounder Off-Road. We're going to do an install today of our slam plate. It's going to stiffen and reinforce the rear suspension area as well as protect your engine and transmission. Uh, the plate on is kind of flimsy. You're going to see some shots of what happened to the plastic on this just running it around. Uh, this is kind of a weak area that needs to be addressed. There's a couple companies that make some plates that are outrageously expensive. Uh, I think ours is much more reasonable and it's a good investment as far as protecting all the important stuff back here from either spreading or just being damaged from impact if you're really hard on these especially or jumping them a lot. The install is pretty straightforward. We're going to use a 10 millimeter to take the factory screws out of the plastic, get it out of our way. You'll need a 13 millimeter wrench to take the negative lead on your battery off since we will be welding on it for this install. The other tools you need are going to be like a wire wheel, a flap disc grinder, uh, a saw saw is handy just to cut the plate loose and of course a welder or someone who can help you weld and a couple clamps to hold this in place. Um, we're going to go ahead and unhook the battery first and then we'll zip the plate off and we'll be right back. Alright, so you can see how mangled this factory skid is. We've actually broke a couple bolts. Um, this is a 2016 turbo model razor. Uh, it's going to be the same for the 1000 XP or the 2017s but it just kind of take a look this is just testing we use this unit for a test bed we've nicknamed him Rocco uh, he'll be racing in SRS races pro UTV races and straight up series bounty hills so he's gonna have a rough life uh, but we are using it just basically as a test bed um, and that's what this is for so I'm gonna go ahead and zip this off with a 10 millimeter okay so now you can see the lower portion of the transmission, uh, the wrench I dropped earlier and couldn't get to. I was like, I'll get it this afternoon. Um, but this is the plate we'll be cutting loose to install everything. All right. So basically, uh, we'll be right back here in just a second. I'll get everything set up to cut this loose and we'll trim it out. Okay. All right, everybody. So we're set up. We've got everything stripped off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these two stitch welds per side. There may be three, but generally there's just the two. Uh, they're about an inch and a quarter long. You can take a uh, cutoff wheel and cut them if you want. Be careful. I'm just going to use a saw saw and cut the first one on each side and then bend the plate down slightly with a wrench and cut the last two. Uh, or one on each side rather. Alright, here we go. cut all the way off on this side all right I'm gonna move to where the camera's at so we'll be back in just a second all right so we've all sold all four of these stitch welds in the back of this bracket it's cut there's still the center section that's welded to the back of this frame mount uh, the best way pretty much the only way if you don't have a torch is going to be to take a cut off wheel and cut it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it. This plate will come out of the way and then we'll start prepping the bottom of it, grinding off the uh, old welds so they're smooth and getting the paint out of the way for the new plate. Okay. Okay. If you want to reuse this and weld it to that plate, this is your time chance to do it. I'm not going to. It's totally a personal preference. I'd rather have a ring mount on this if I wanted one. So we've got the uh, area ground down, all the loose paint removed, and uh, we're ready to test fit this. So basically what we're going to do is uh, slide it up 
on the bottom where it's going to line up make sure we've got all the paint clear and out of the way and once we're happy with the, the cleaning and prep we'll take some c-clamps clamp it in place we'll tack it in a couple spots double check make sure it's still good and then we'll burn it in um, this is a great time to go ahead and double check that you have the battery disconnected on the negative side so I'm gonna go double check myself and then I'll be right back all right, so we've got everything ground on the bottom with all the paint off and all the uh, original stitch welds are gone. Uh, I took a jet floor jack and jacked the plate up into place, tapped around those so I got it where I wanted it. And I've taken two C-clamps and just kind of tightened them on it so that it's secure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and put a couple tack welds in place. Then I'm going to move the C-clamps again to clamp it nice and smooth uh, on the front end, tack it again. Then I'll move to the back, clamp it again, tack that, and then I'll go in and put about five stitch welds on each side, about an inch long, and about three across the front to the factory skid blade. Uh, the back, depending on how bad your frame has been tweaked, ours has been tweaked, you can actually see the pasture side has a rise in it, just for the amount of abuse we've already thrown at it. Uh, so we're gonna, the plate will be slightly jacked up on that corner. Back here, there's a little bit of tweaking on the bottom edge, so we've gone ahead and uh, go in last and we'll, we'll jack this back corner up. So uh, give me just a second and we'll be right back with a stitch weld in place. Alright everyone, so we've got the plate welded on in the bottom, it's seam welded all the way around. Uh, be patient, remember you're welding upside down for the front section especially and for the most part on the side, so go slow, make sure it's super clean when you get started. On the back you're going to have a gap. The factory plate is stamped and it actually raises up on the inside. So this tape to the back of these plates will be a little 7 inch piece of 5 16 rod. What that's for is to bridge this gap back here. You're just going to slide it in on the gap, just like that. What you're going to do is just seam weld the top of it, seam weld the bottom of it, and now you got it nice and tight and rigid. All right? This is basically going to be much stronger than that little thin piece of 8 eighth inch thick stamped metal they've got that's bent. Uh, so it's going to add a lot. The little tube on each side, it comes down, you, you're going to want to bevel that flat, grind it flat with the bottom of the frame rails. That way the plate sits flat and it also will make this gap work out to where it's about 5 16 rod and slide right in and make a nice little bit, all right? All right, buddy. We've got the plate fully welded. We've got some automotive primer on it, uh, on the inside and the outside. Get everything sealed up before we get any rust. Uh, just reiterate, this is what we took off and replaced with that big skid that runs the length all the way up to the factory cross member, welded to the factory cross member. Uh, so this is kind of kind of dinky. Something else to mention too is, like I said earlier, uh, our frame was already warped a little bit. This razor has been pushed really hard because it is a test bed. Uh, had a, there's a heck of a ding on the frame rail on this side and I think that's what's tweaked our frame. Uh, that doesn't protect it where it got hit so it was able to twist it a little bit. We jacked the plate in place with some C-clamps, welded everything in so now it's nice and rigid. It's not going to shift anymore. If we jump this like we're 
going to, uh, it won't continue to twist, which is what you want. You don't want it to move anymore. Plus, now the transmission and engine and all those components are nice and rigid where they're at and fully protected. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about before we finished up uh, taking off the jack stands, hooking the battery back up, is your factory skid plate. This is what's left of ours. It's, uh, it's had a better life, obviously. But if you have yours and it's still in reasonable shape and you want to reuse it, uh, you can actually cut it here. You can measure it, set it up there, and just mark it. Cut it with a saw saw, and you should be able to retain most of these holes from here back. Uh, your drain hole in the skid plate is guarded by the skid plate, so you don't have to worry about any of this. This isn't relevant anymore. Uh, but the forward section, if you want to put it back on, you can. So anyway, I hope this was a good overview. I know like I said earlier, uh, at the beginning of the year, there's a couple companies selling these. They're outrageously expensive. So we're selling one that's much more affordable, does exactly the same thing, and is actually made out of wear steel rather than coal roll. Uh, so it'll last a really long time. Um, I hope this helps you out on the trail, and if you're competing, or if you just want to make sure that your razor is as rigid as it can be and protected. So hope to see you out on the trail, see you at the SRS races, Pro UTV races, and the Straight Up Series. Thanks.